let them out. You sent me a Slack message uh, like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I was trying to prepare you for visual cues, but you already had things. I didn't have Splatoon up at the time, but I was able to quickly uh, get Splatoon put in there. That was just, that was on the fly. Uh, I, I, saw, I saw the alarm on your face when you had to pull up Splatoon, and I was trying to prevent that. <laughs> Alrighty, friends. Uh, we are gathered here today to talk about the best original soundtracks of 2022. Um I feel like in I, I maintain this thought. I know I said this on the last episode, and I've said this for every year leading up to this, is you either have a visuals year or you have a soundtrack year. I definitely think that there are some solid soundtracks that came out this year, but it's one of the weaker ones, I think, overall. Um, or rather, there's a lot of like tier two soundtracks. Um, a lot of things like, oh yeah, this was good, this was successful. Um but nothing that I'm necessarily hopping and bopping to in my free time. But I am going to go ahead and start this off with my number three, which is Kirby and the Forgotten Lands. Um, I think Kirby games always generally have some pretty fucking good music to them, and this is no exception. Um, they do the normal Nintendo thing of when they're coming to like the the stronger platform or the bigger platform as opposed to a handheld where they're going to like do much more orchestral stuff and really kind of produce the heck out of the soundtrack. And with Kirby music, it sounds super fucking good. Who would have guessed? Um, I think it works super well for that game and every single piece of music in it fits the level that it's associated with. Um, Just really good soundtrack work all in all. Uh, But it's very much that good Nintendo sounding um, sound. It's got good Gerby feel. It's got good Gerby <laughs> feel. Um, yeah, I I think the Kirby had a completely serviceable soundtrack. Kirby well, game. That, I'm going to kick it on over to Ryan, the really uh, into music guy himself. Yeah, which it wasn't like a super, super great year for soundtracks, but there were three soundtracks that I like listened to in my free time because uh, I actually like them quite a bit. Uh, number three is going to be Pointy. Uh, it's not it's, a real game. It's by Callum Bowen, the <laughs> guy who did Netflix thing. Yeah. Okay. It's also on uh, PC, but if you want to play it on mobile, it's Netflix exclusive. Um, but the soundtrack's by Callum Bowen, the guy who did oh. Lovely Planet and all that stuff, and it's one of those soundtracks, and it's great. Just a fun, fun little listen. Does it have bleeps and bloops? Sort of. It's got more like squeaks and squooks. Okay. Mm. Oh, gross. <laughs> Jason, what is your number three squeak and squook? He's oh. dead. He's got his AirPods in. He uh, can't hear you. I was I was <laughs> muted. Because I was messing with something on my computer. Um, He's so, queuing up oh. his own soundboard. <laughs> uh, uh, my number three, I, I kind of struggle with this one because I've I have a hard time paying attention to the soundtracks and games and remembering them outside of when I'm actually playing it. Like the soundtrack always really affects how I feel about the game. But as soon as I turn it off, I half the time I forget what it sounded like. I don't really know why. Um, so I just kind of went back and tried to listen to some outside of playing the game. Uh, so I kind of struggled to narrow it down from a four. But I'll say my number three was probably Vampire Survivors. Um, that game, I mean, it's a game with no dialogue. You just run around and are shooting stuff while you exist and hit a total of four buttons or one joystick. But so the the music kind of is the only world or like thing to set the vibe. It's just you're running around in circles, blowing stuff up. Um, but I know most of you, if not all of you played it. So I don't know if it's going to pop onto your lists. It might. I had Vampire might. Survivors as an honorable mention because I didn't really hear it, but Dasha and everyone else said it was good, so I felt like it should show up. Uh, but my number three was Elden Ring. Yeah. 
just you know it's one it's, of those it's one of those software yeah, soundtracks. it's one of those yeah exactly it's one of those it does what it's supposed to do it sounds good they orchestrated the fuck out of it and i think they did a great job i only remember two songs from it uh, which are Radon song uh, no not that it's and the house the, building uh... one in the epilogue <laughs> Your little hash on the prairie. No, um, <laughs> I remember that the was main a good screen. one. I remember the main screen because it oh. starts yelling at you immediately. <laughs> yeah, and the uh, regal ancestor fight theme, the big wood deer. Mm. Oh yeah, I did not fight that boss. That was a cool <laughs> boss. It's a pretty easy boss. It's cool, but it's pretty easy. Sometimes you need that. Danny, is your number three soundtrack good, but pretty easy? Um, it is. I, w- I would say that uh, I would uh, put po- uh, uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus at my number three, I think. Um, I, like Pokemon games kind of always have good soundtracks, and this was kind of like marrying that to this sort of style that like Breath of the Wild had. So it, it's uh, light and uh, airy and it, it brings the feeling of the like open world that you're exploring or, or relatively open world um I, the uh gonna give a shout out to uh the lead composer go ichinose um i think he did uh i think he and his team did a phenomenal job uh yeah um just kind of i thought it elevated the uh like old timey pokemon world uh that we got to explore uh so yeah that uh pokemon legends arceus is my number three or soundtrack but did it have a song from ed sheeran in it (laughs) (laughs) i don't it it, i don't think so i don't then it's not as good as the scarlet and violet soundtrack i'm sorry we gotta we gotta just say he's he's got a point now, it if has they had neither done, Ed Sheeran or Toby Fox in it, if they had done the thing where it was the uh, the ding 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 ding, and then it was Ed Sheeran going yo, <laughs> then it would be good. Um, that being said, I I actually did play Arceus, and I, I I agree that it the Breath of the Wild comparison is probably the best one where it is the um it's very few notes. And it sets the mood very, very well. Um, I I think it's one of the more successful things that that game does. I forgot it came out in 2020. Because it came out in January, so I thought it was just like 2021. It's a double Pokemon year. Triple Pokemon. Triple Pokemon year. Is it? Brilliant Diamond, Shiny Pearl. Oh, right. That was this year? That was this year. It was last year, but yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, it was 2022. Gun was... to my head, I would have said those were 2021 games. <laughs> yeah, I know, the right? The Gen 5 remakes are probably coming out either this or next year, so... No, because they uh, put, like, one of their little, like, teasers of, uh, for, like, hey, this is our next remake in Pokemon Arceus. Jesus. So, yeah, get ready for Black and White 1, 2. Hey, I'm okay with that, because I love Black and White. Um, no, I'm sure they I'm won't have any it. of the, in like, the better stuff from black or white too either don't worry i'm also never gonna get a let's go johto ever anyway we're losing we're losing the plot here hunter what is your number three soundtrack i'm gonna be honest this number three is kind of a filler um you love to hear it because (laughs) it's uh it's from the fire emblem warriors because that's mostly remixes there are some original songs but i don't fucking remember them but um the one thing I will give the Dynasty Warriors developers is that they really know how to remix a song using electric guitars. Was was Fire Emblem Warriors this year? Yeah. Jesus. Three hopes. <laughs> you didn't have as good of a year as you thought you did, did you, Dash? Jesus. It's your drug on. <laughs> it was a yeah, lot. Yeah, sure. Le- this year was like two or three guitars. years worth good, of games. That's a good thing. <laughs> Oh, is that all you have on it? I think electric yeah, guitar. Like cool. I said, it's pretty much a filler because I was struggling okay. to think of a third one. Um, I'll get into my number two then, and I 
at least feel some slight emotions positively about this because um while while i think kirby did a good job and all i think that without the soundtrack the game would be lesser but my number two is neon white um while neon white is like spiritually my hotline miami of the year i i think that the soundtrack does it a great service and just the kind of the pounding and frenetic stuff is really good to focus in on the action uh suits it really really well i'm a huge fan of it um i i like the neon white soundtrack actively uh best thing that can happen to your ears while you are playing that game for certain uh yeah suits the game really well i i'm a big fan but ryan what is your number two but my number two uh is going to be ooblets because it has the earwormiest earworms like when like those songs stay in your head for days and it's a game about dance battles Mm -hmm. ooblets they're really good it's like kind of cute and fun very kind of relaxing vibe but it's uh the songs are super super catchy I didn't play that much of Ooblets, but I do. Like, it is one of the things on here that is, it's grayed out for me, but it, it was one of the contenders just based on what little time I did spend with it. If I had spent more time with it, I, I could definitely see it charting on here. But Jason, what do you have charting at your number two slot? Uh, so my number two, I, don't, I really don't have that much to say. It's just kind of music that added to the vibe of the game, but I think my number two would be Sifu. Yeah. Like, it's not, like, music I'm going to listen to. It's not, like, I, I can't think of specific songs from the game. But I think it's just a game where the music just added to the overall kind of, like, it kind of goes with the visuals. It just makes a good vibe for the game, what you're going through. It, but it's not, like, individual songs I want to, like, listen to on my own. I don't know that it specifically did this, but it had the feeling of one of those soundtracks that is reactive to your actions. Because, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. I remember having like going through the combat and like feeling like the sound was like the music was more impactful when I was making an impactful strike on someone. Yeah. I, I, I also like Sifu soundtrack a lot Uh, the club specifically probably being my standout one, just because again, hotline Miami esque shit of the year. Um, it, it's it's a it, it works very well for that game. Every single environment has a very fitting soundtrack to it. You guys have been talking about Sifu all year, and each time I'm like, oh, I should play that, and here we are. <laughs> Didn't you like time. Absolver? I barely played Absolver. Oh, okay. Well, you, yeah, I, I mean, you really should play it. It's it's about to come to more platforms, also, so you it'll you will be able to. Uh, but yeah, definitely play Sifu. It definitely. Yes. Hey, we'll we'll get to we'll get to that. Um, I'm sure we will. Is it coming Lily, to what is your number two? <laughs> yes, it is. My number two for soundtrack was Session Skate Sim, actually. How it, much ska? I, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> there. So <laughs> it. I don't know that it's an original soundtrack per se, but going off the rules that we had, I've never heard of any of the fucking songs in this game or any of the artists that made them. So I was cool. like, fuck it. I think it counts. Um, the sock clause, right? No, yeah. so no, it's that, what's that it rule has to exist. So it's the Hotline Miami clause, but that rule exists because I wanted to give Grand Theft Auto Five the soundtrack of the year. Oh. Um, but Ryan said, "Go fuck yourself." That's the only reason well, that rule exists. That's fair. Why is it the Hotline Miami clause then? If it was for <laughs> Grand Theft Auto Five, because we all gave Hotline Miami the award, award not knowing that it was a licensed soundtrack. Uh... Um, but it kind of. It kind of gave me the same vibe as starting up skate for the first time where it it seemed to be similar to what we were talking about with Sifu. It seems like it's kind of reactive, like the more you're actually skating, the faster you're moving, the more tricks in your line, the kind of louder the music gets, which I know is something that skate specifically skate three at the very least does, um, which I really like because it's that's in my experience that's what it's like to skate with headphones on is like just the more you're into it the more you're into it um but i actually think it does it a little bit better than skate 3 or the other skate games specifically because there are different radio stations that you can turn to 
Nice. So it's it's kind of a mix. I have any of these bands either. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what I think. Okay. <laughs> if the really into music guy hasn't heard of this, it definitely counts for but the, there's the someone category. The, you've there's someone the whose name. Community? Have you heard of Sherlock Bones? <laughs> <laughs> Only from looking at the soundtrack. Me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think it it's kind of a mixture of like in Skate, they gave you the mixtape where you can kind of pick what songs you want to show up and which ones you don't. But in a broader spectrum where it's, you know, here's this rock radio station and then here's your ska radio station and et cetera, et cetera. And I think they there's did a, whole a phenomenal radio job station? with it. I'm pretty sure. Are there like three real big fish songs and that's it? <laughs> no, 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 he hasn't. Uh, heard, or, yeah. Real uh, big fish is way too mainstream. Yeah, no, this. no, oh, no. sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think they, I think they did a phenomenal job and it, it definitely upped the gameplay experience especially considering I saw it got the 1.0 release. I went in expecting almost nothing like my, my expectations were ground level and it, it blew me away. Does it have Jason Lee yelling at you? No, that's the only downside. I'm really glad that that game turned out well, uh, just because it's a bit of a, something to fall back on if skate kind of doesn't do it. Um, I'm, I'm glad that that game worked out. And also skateboarding games historically have soundtracks are an incredibly vital element to a good skateboarding game. So I'm glad to hear yeah. that it's got a banger. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. But Danny, what is the number two thing that you really enjoyed? Uh, we already touched on it. I learned my lesson of jumping ahead. Uh, Sifu. Uh, Sifu. Sifu. Number two. Yeah, that's fair. Sifu at two. I see music <laughs> and I hear it. Connor, what music do you see in here? My Number two is also neon white. Cool. Anything else in particular? <laughs> um, I really like the Ape Escape One soundtrack, and it really reminds <laughs> me of that sometimes. He's right. Like he's yeah. right. Yeah. Um. Well, then that'll bring it back around to me, and I will say, this is a uh, uh, this is was such a fast lock for my number one that i have had a bunch of other games that's like okay is that this has been my kind of bar for the year but my number one is vampire survivors um it's the only one of these soundtracks that i would find myself listening to outside of the game um it has a ton of good tracks on it it also does the thing where like as you unlock more music you can choose whatever song you want to be playing in the background so it's like oh i don't want to do the normal one for the stage i'm going to do the the fake bayonetta theme every single time for every single level um it's a really really good fake bayonetta theme um everything everything in vampire survivors just sounds great and combined with like the rhythm and action of all of your weapons kind of like blending into what's going on i just think it's a super good sound all in all and with the amount of time you're going to be spending in that game just kind of doing the same thing i think it's really critical that they nail the music in it and i i still am not sick of it whatsoever um i can listen to that fake band at a theme forever it's fantastic so with that I, ryan oh oh I, I was just going to say like i didn't touch vampire survivors uh at all this year you fucking it, change that homie it's a it's a misconnection. I don't have it's a, on phones. Like, it's on phones. It is on phones. Oh, oh yeah. Also, isn't it only like five bucks? Yeah. It's free um, on phones. It's free on mobile. Oh, yeah. Damn. <laughs> but um. But it's like also kind of shit. Seen of it, but... it is like it, it seems like a game that like if you don't have good like sound design for it, then it just falls apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I could have. I could have with the amount of time I spent, and I could have seen myself muting that game really quick and just turning it down and putting on a podcast or whatever but it it That's bops it and it never stops bopping i mean along right. with the soundtrack it just has good sound design like picking up mm. the gems is like tickles mm. my brain in the same way as like popping bubble wrap or something like it's just like every sound in there is super satisfying the, the weapons have good weapon noises um like the the whoosh of throwing an axe into the air um mm-hmm. I, ah, it's just so good the the when you when you have like the the sigma sword and it go and the the point of a critical hit it oh god it just sounds so good <laughs> but ryan what is your thing number one that sounds so good of 2022 uh mine was neon white yeah like Solid. i that was one of my most listened to albums of 2022 um like not <laughs> only is it my favorite video game soundtrack but it was in like my top five just albums of last year this year um 
uh, Danny said it sounded like a like a PS one thing, and I I agree. It kind of captured that um that vibe of like late nineties, early two thousands, like menu music. Like it sounded like a I don't like a, you should hear it on like Wipeout or something like that, or like a stage select on it's those got old good games. Ape Escape feel. Got good Ape Escape feel. Ape Escape presents soundtrack of the year. Yeah, but it's it's really good. It's also just my favorite Machine Girl soundtrack. So I don't really like Machine Girl, but the Neon White uh, soundtrack is their best album. <laughs> it's a good soundtrack. Uh, but Jason, what would you call the number one soundtrack of the year? So yeah, my number one was not Neon White, but it was one I was. It was basically battling to get into the one, two, or three spot. Mine were all. I think on any given day, my top four, any of them could have been in any spot on that list. Um, but my number one, I went with Elden Ring. I think a good reason for that is probably because it is my first FromSoft game. So mm-hmm. like the the big music hit me a lot harder versus a lot of you that have played like five of these at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So like I like I like I played maybe five to ten hours of the first Dark Souls like three years ago. But other than that, this is the only thing I've done. Uh, so I just think it struck me more. All the music felt really big and made the situations more intense. Yeah, but try I listening see, to that soundtrack I can, on I can, its own. I can see it being like just more of the same if you played five or six of these games, though. Well, when you listen it's to so it good. without the... Yeah, yeah, it's the same, but it's different. When you listen to it outside of the game, you're going to get to like a boss battle and you're going to get anxious just listening to a song. <laughs> I did that at work learning. on Friday and I was like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah. Why is my heart racing? And I was like, oh, fuck, it's it's Malekith's song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, Lily, what is your number one? My number one was Neon White. Yeah, I don't okay, yeah, I don't really, know yeah. what else there is. Can't to argue say with that. that point. Like it just no, it, it sounded sounds sounds really great. fucking good. And it 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 sounded really fucking good. It's also got like good sound design on the gunshots and stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Danny, what is your number one that sounded really good? I really hope it's what I hope it is. Uh I I don't know what you hope it is. Uh Sorry. I have an honorable mention that might be what you hope it is. Uh but uh my number one is uh Splatoon three. Uh yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh like these games created a genre of of it of their own squid punk very fun it's the only game whose soundtrack i listen to outside of the game this <laughs> uh <laughs> like it's your one stop uh, shop for squid punk <laughs> they got a monopoly <laughs> on I, squid I, punk i won't put games i didn't play into my categories but yes yeah, Splat- i mean i give me give me all of the fucking squid hop and squid punk you can possibly give me absolutely like it, like and new tracks dropping for the game like it's uh just every every match is a rush because because of the music largely and it, it's yeah no uh splatoon consistently has great music um i i will forever love squid punk it's it's a self-imposed thing where i couldn't put it on my list but i i was re- i was really tempted to break my rules for splatoon 3 okay i'm glad i'm glad i was able to provide that for you <laughs> But Hunter, what is yeah. your number one? Is it Xenoblade? It is Xenoblade. Yeah. It's Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I really like how they've done this with every Xenoblade so far, but I just really like how they have a different theme for both day and night in the areas. And usually night is like a kind of calmer version. But then there are also some areas where like, you go in the day and you're like, hey, this isn't so bad. And then night rolls around and the music starts getting scary. And you're like, I don't want it to be here anymore. I think Xenoblades historically have extremely, extremely good music. But like, is it oh, is yeah. a lot more like string stuff in this one also? Yeah, there's a lot of strings. Uh, nighttime usually has some more piano stuff too. And plus, I one thing I've always liked is that... Uh, when you're in an area that has like a city, the city theme also kind of sounds like the area. Like it, it almost sounds like a remix at points. So that way, if you're like just listening to the soundtrack in by itself without the game, you're like, Oh, this is the desert area. Cause it sounds like the desert song. <laughs> hmm. So it kind of gives it like that, like the music gives it a place in the world. Yeah. 
Okay. I think that's smart. Well, with that, um, I'll do a quick shout out to Sonic Frontiers, heavily ironically, because every time you go into a boss fight, it does a butt rock song with <laughs> lyrics um, when you're as supersonic. And it's on so many layers of irony anymore. I don't I don't even know. I It, it's, it rules. It, you know what? Fuck it. It rules. Um, but I still can't believe Sega hired that man. Heavy, heavy irony on that. Um, uh, my honorable mention would be the switch port of Persona Five Royal. Um, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, let's talk about Persona music again. <laughs> fuck it, always. <laughs> what a coincidence! It's, my honorable mention is the PC port of Persona Five Royal. Let me talk to you about fucking slaps every. Let time. me talk to you about Rivers in the Desert. Okay, can we bring up Rivers in the Desert again? I think we can. Can we bring up how bullshit it is? They replaced Last Surprise as the regular battle music. It's fucked. Although, like. I, I I was very frustrated with it. That's good content. But the new regular uh, <laughs> battle music came around like it. I came around to it. Yeah, it but was it's, very, not, it's it's no less surprise. It's not. Less surprise. It's it's not less <laughs> surprise. So I just started using the costumes that changed the background music to like other games music and stuff. But also, like when you when last surprise does come up every once in a while, like you're you're it's a surprise. It's not the last one. <laughs> My well, honorable yeah. mention was uh, Proteus. Pretty it, sound, solid. It, it sounds like one of those new Doom soundtracks. So there are chainsaws in it? Oh, yeah. Well, with that, that brings us to an end for the best original soundtrack of 2022. Uh, and as always, it is an honor just to be nominated. But we will uh, be moving on to the soundtrack of the, the of the pen for the next category where we will be going over the best story and writing of 2022. And we hope that you will join us then Uh, until then. Enjoy yourself. My segue game is fierce. That was, that was really fun. Soundtrack of the pen. (laughs) Dash has been workshopping that all week.